wanted to find whether I could sort of see whether I could find luxury goods as a consistency in real estate markets. We spend a lot of time as urban economists and housing economists thinking about the things that change so we can Incomes change, uh, tax rates change, uh, public policy changes. Very rarely do we step back and think about what's the sum of all those things. We've had huge shocks to the basic structure of the economic engine in LA, and yet the places where the rich people were are basically the same places they were 40, 50 years ago. Same thing for the poor areas, and so the, rank, the overall rent correlation is, is quite high. Despite getting bigger, despite changing, despite industry changing, despite technology, all these kind of things we, we keep talking about as urban economists, the overall overwhelming trend here is towards stability. Right? So the idea is we're going to have volatility, we're going to have the prestige, the willingness to pay for prestige will go up or down, but it won't ever cross because this is a more prestigious neighborhood than this one. On that front, um, can you create prestige? It's not the land underneath it, it's the location that matters, right? It's the co-location of activities in the same place. And in this case, I'm going to get the co-location of like people, in this case, maybe the rich, who bid for each other to be with each other. The volatility of prestige markets is greater Roughly speaking, because prestige is a fixed supply, they're not going to build any more homes in Beverly Hills. It's all built up. And so when there's fluctuations in demand, it's going to be reflected in price, not, not the quantity of houses that are, that are prestigious. In the paper, there's a, kind of a sketch of a theory model, kind of allow this model to be able to simulate the volatility and, and the relative rankings of these, of these neighborhoods. And, and there's some issues, there's a couple of issues here. One is that, yes, there's a fixed supply of prestige, but we all, but they're gonna have to, he's gonna have to deal with the fact that in the negative direction, everything's inelastic. This is the old glazer Jerko argument that, the, that if, you, if there's a decrease in demand, basically the, the supply is perfectly inelastic. Maybe Beverly Hills is more volatile here, but once the, the boom and bust hit, I think that's quite arguable. I think that Compton is actually more volatile when you talk about volatility, it means something different in the boom and bust period, and it's more volatile in these low-income areas. And, and, I, and I think that's due to speculation. I think that's due to investor demand.